Hi everybody, welcome to Wakefield in West Yorkshire. Um, so what I'm going to do today is talk about um, our tree wardens group. Just get the slide up there, there we are. So first of all, so I'm Roger Parkinson and uh, we've had a tree wardens group here in Wakefield since 2007. Uh, so first of all, well, what is a tree wardens group? Uh, well, tree wardens are um, volunteers working in partnership mainly with our local council and it's, and it's under an umbrella organisation called the Tree Council, which is in London. Most volunteer uh, tree wardens groups, if you look at the map on their website, are mainly sort of in the Midlands and further south. So we're one of the, the few northern uh, uh, groups that exist. But the great thing about the setup with that is that it links you up as a group with your local tree officer and that department within the council. So it establishes a relationship really early on to try and help the working together within your community. Uh, the badge that you can see on screen as well there is the charter uh, branch. We are a charter branch under the Woodland Trust as well. Now any community organization can be a, a tree charter branch and I'll be talking about the charter a little bit later on. So first of all, to show where we are, right, so maybe not changing screen at the moment. Bear with me, we're not changing the slide. Why is that? <laughs> Sorry for this guys, for some reason, it's now not changing the slide. Uh, just bear with me a sec. Let's come out of that again. Yeah, hi Roger, it's Tessie. You might want to, you might need to kind of click out and you, if you, sh you know how you showed the screen before. Yeah, let's just try that again. It's the first time that's not, not worked. Let's try. Technology, hey? Yeah, it's always good, isn't it? Technology, we love it. We love it. Right, let's try from this one. Right, here we go. Right, so Tree Wardens Group, we've got that. So where are we? Well, we're pretty much in the centre of Great Britain. If you look at a map of Great Britain, um, we're at the top of the M1 as it joins the M62. So we're right in the middle of the what we call the West Yorkshire Conurbation, which is a, a, a becoming a massively built-up area between all the towns and cities in West Yorkshire. Uh, and we sort of link up with lots of those neighbouring uh, built up areas and suburban areas as well. I'm actually in the city of Wakefield, uh, but Wakefield itself, if, if we're not a square district, by the way, within that you'll see the red triangle within there shows where Wakefield city is. Uh, but Wakefield district as a whole covers other towns as well. We've got uh, Pontefract and Castleford, Normanton and Featherstone, Hemsworth and various other places in the district. Uh, which is the Metropolitan District of Wakefield. So as a group, we, we cover the whole district wherever these projects might crop up. Now we're also fortunate enough within the last few years, the new project, the Northern Forest has come up. Um, across all regions of the UK, there are regional forests and we've always been in the White Rose Forest of, of Yorkshire. But of course, just over the hill, we've got the Red Rose Forest and near Liverpool, there's the Mersey Forest, there's a forest out as well towards East Yorkshire and the Northern Forest aims are to link all that up. I think when it was originally announced, people were thinking, oh, it's going to be a, a long, narrow forest running just along the edge of the M62. But as you'll see within this green area, this is the extent as to which the Northern Forest is hoping to cover. Now, a forest isn't an area which has trees just everywhere. So if you drive down your driveway, you'll bump into a tree. Uh, forests have lots of open spaces. Uh, and there'll be areas of trees as well. So it's trying to find all those places to plant trees. And all the local councils within these areas, within these areas have been asked to identify locations where trees can be planted. And we've started already in Wakefield. Wakefield Council have identified the first six locations which have just been planted this winter uh, to add the first 12,000 trees. Uh, and our aim is to increase our tree cover by 30%. To give you an, an indication of what that might look like, uh, well, if you went back to the 1920s, just after the First World War, our tree cover in this region was probably less than 2%, and nationally it was less than 6%. Um, then it crept up slowly over the years because obviously we've been affected by industry, the heavy industry over many years and the mining industry. So we lost most of our woodlands during the last few hundred years. Uh, but as that's slowly grown up, uh, that when I started doing this just over 30 years ago, I remember the reports then showed Wakefield District's tree cover, canopy cover, has been 3.8%. So 
So it's crept up a little bit. But a recent study done by the White Rose Forest to, to be, you know, to see what this current situation is shows Wakefield District now at 14.1%. So that's fantastic that it's, it's gone up so much. Uh, and hopefully, I'm hoping that within my time that we can get that tree cover to over 20% and that would be fantastic. So what have we done over this time as a tree wardens group to try and affect that change? As a group, we've got a constitution and within that constitution, it sets out our aims and values. Um, and a lot of that is, is also about education, is about uh, spreading the good word about trees and what trees do for us. And very early on, the, the, the leader of the arbicultural team at Wakefield Council, Bill, he was a great supporter of starting off, of us starting a community group to do this and link up with trees. Because as he said, look, you know, everything that we come across as a councillor's tree officers is bad news. We're dealing with problems all the time. It'd be great to get the good message out about what trees do. So he identified a thing called the tree bank uh, that was planted in the early 1980s down at Newmanadam Country Park. And another one was planted at Pontefract near the race course. And it was a collection of native trees, very small native trees in the early 1980s to be a bank, a resource for them to take trees out of to use. So the one at, at Newmanadam was this one and it's a, it's a sizable plot. And where you can see this photograph, imagine it as a slice of cake and we're at the pointy end of the slice of cake. And this is one section of the immense woodlands that are down at New Milan Country Park. But this collection is, is native and non-native. Um, so what we did, first of all, we were lucky within our group that we had an experienced uh, horticulture specialist who recently retired, Barry. And Barry was able to look at what was there already. We knew from the records of what was planted in the early 80s, what should be there. He mapped the site as to what was present, but also we were able to, to tag really the trees that were diseased and damaged. We had a lot of squirrel damage in there, lots of grey squirrels down there that damage the trees and allow the upper, upper parts of the trees to die off by, uh, you know, bringing infections into the tree. Um, so, it's a, so it's then thinning out the site. Um, we did it as two phases. This is the start of phase one. Uh, this was about 1998, end of 98. The lady in the white hat to the left, she's from an organisation called, it's now called CiteAid. It was Roger, West sorry? Please, sorry to interrupt. The slides don't seem to be um, moving forward for everyone viewing. All we can see is the bench image. Right. Yeah, it's OK. I'm still on the bench image. Oh, you fine. are. OK. Yeah. No worries. No yeah, worries. Just, Apologies. That's fine. It's OK. So, so the lady on the left there, she's from the West Riding Blind Association. What we realised is that a site like this is great for tactile engagement with, with trees and learning about trees. Uh, and then other groups from the area helped us to plant um, the new newer trees to the collection. So we wanted to expand the collection. So we put together a wish list of trees that people, if they wanted to sponsor a tree, uh, could then pick a tree from the wish list. Originally, we applied for a national lottery grant um, to try and do this project. It was estimated to take 10 years and would cost £60,000. Um, we were refused that money. And in a way, that was a blessing, really, because then lots of people came forward and said, well, I'll sponsor this, I'll sponsor that. You know, we'll help you with this. And now it's become a community site. And on this picture alone, we've got uh, a couple there that, uh, from the village community group, the New Milledam Community and Conservation Association. We've got friends of New Milledam Country Park. We've got tree wardens. We've got Wakefield Angling Club who sponsored some of the trees. So that way we managed to get the collection up to 113 different types of tree within the collection. And, and the way that sponsorships just happened really, we were up there working one day and someone came past and we told them what we were doing. And we said, look, you know, we're looking at ways to fund it. They said, well, we'll I've recently lost my wife. I'd like to fund a tree in her memory. And that's the way we've funded the entire project through memorial donations for all the aspects uh, of, of the features on the site from the path material, the bird boxes, the wildflower seed, the benches, uh, the trees themselves, uh, the people covering the cost of those. And people have been very generous and it's helped us to create a, um, a fund to help to maintain that site. In the distance behind the group, you can see have, who've, who've come to, to be a part of their uh, planting of their tree in memory of mum and dad. Uh, you can see phase two, which hasn't been thinned out yet. Um, so we'll, we'll move into that after, after this phase one was finished. Um, into phase two now, um, in Queen's Diamond Jubilee year, 
nationally, the tree council were sending out trees to be 60 trees um, that would go all over the country to different groups to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And this is a, a Prunus avium plena cherry uh, that was going into the Arboretum collection. Um, and there are some of the volunteers. Uh, this is mentioned in a book which was presented to Her Majesty. Uh, and it was a, a book about how we'd done these projects, how we got the trees into the various sites. And this was the one at Wakefield. And this is the way that tree looks now. So there's a plaque on it to say what it is and the signs that identify what type of tree it is and that kind of thing. Now we have a dedication book for this arboretum and, and when people have funded trees for it or, or whatever they funded towards it, they're mentioned in the book uh, who it's in memory of, which tree it is, and then a short explanation or a verse or whatever to say why it was done and, it's, and it, whose memory it's in. And the local school was involved as well. They were asked, I went to the, one of the nearby schools and said, look, can you do some pictures about the queen planting trees? And over her reign, she's planted lots and lots of trees in various locations. And this photograph is actually in the House of Lords where six of the pictures were put on display in the House of Lords uh, and they were able to see the work that the children had done. And, and this appears in the book as well. Uh, the gentleman on the right is actually the tree warden from the Archers radio show. Now I get lots of contacts from different groups and organizations saying, look, can we help in some way? And this is a group of young people that were on a training course with another organization and they got into it saying, look, can we come and do some work with you? So we were doing some path work this day to improve disabled access through the site. But also while we're there, I always like to talk about why we do it, about the different types of woodland and things like this. The nice thing with this particular example is that one of the, one of the students on this course uh, went to their presentation event some months later. They were only with us for a week down on site, uh, but they said, what was your favorite part of the course that you've done? They said, oh, when we were down at Numula Down and Roger was telling us about the nature, telling us about the trees and the plants and the invasive species and things like this, I want to learn more about horticulture. I want to get more involved. And that's when you realize that the things that you do can change somebody's life, can influence something that they're gonna go on to do something really special. Uh, and I was contacted by Catrick Army Garrison, which is about 60 miles up the A1 from us. Uh, they'd come back from uh, being abroad. Uh, their officer said, look, we'd like to come and do some work in the community. We're told that you're the man to talk to by Wakefield Council. And I said, yeah, we need to remove the invasive rhododendron from the surrounding woodland around the Arboretum. Will you come and help us? Uh, and they brought, I think it was 56 soldiers on the first time they came and they could get to the places which we couldn't. And they had a great day. Uh, we put on tea and cakes down at the boathouse, uh, made them feel really welcome. And so they felt part of our community and they must have enjoyed it because they came back some weeks later and helped, in us, helped us on another site, which is a site of special scientific interest where we were doing some maintenance on that site to, to maintain a heathland. So it's great to have these engagements. And the youngest soldier was able to add a tree, a special tree that we planted to mark their visit uh, in the Arboretum as well. So this is a, a weeping willow that we're adding into there. This is what the Arboretum can look like. So when it's cut short, but we had a debate at this time saying, well, look, we're in a country park. Should it be cut short or should it be left longer like this? And, and we are a country park, you know, one argument would gain across with, look, we need to get lots of diversity in there. This is one of the few sections where sunlight gets in. Uh, we get over 300,000 visitors a year come to this country park. Apparently, it's, I think it's the third most popular visitor attraction in Yorkshire by footfall. There's no cost to come into this site uh, and lots of people like to walk through it. So uh, we did a survey of visitors and, and overwhelming the result was, please don't overmanage it. We like to see nature. Uh, and so that's the way we manage it now with footpaths cut through it uh, and to access the trees that's in the collection. You can see some of the first signage on this winter picture uh, and we set the post high so that people could obviously see the signs and engage with them, learn the common name and the scientific name uh, to find out a bit more about trees as part of our, one of our educational aims. And we've had school visits up there uh, and various other walking visits and things like this. So we're within that diversity that's in that uh, undergrowth, really. Uh, we have it cut every September, uh, but during the summer, of course, we've got ladybird larvae that like to be on stinging nettles. Of course, you don't want stinging nettles in your garden, but in a country park, perfect, we want those. Pollinators, unusual pollinators, like this red soldier beetle. Uh, you know, we, we want those as well. 
and, and ones like this and with this photograph that we took uh, I've never seen this creature before or since it's a longhorn beetle you can see it likes to eat pollen but it lays its eggs in rotten wood and it's an important reason to leave dead wood laying around the edges of the site and in the woodland uh, and, and this particular photograph was taken by a gentleman who came to volunteer with us. I was contacted by a social worker who said, look, I've got this gentleman on my books. He lives in care. He has Asperger's syndrome and he's so depressed. He hasn't spoken for two years. We know he likes nature. Can he come with you when you do what you do and to see if it will help him feel better? Uh, and I can tell you that within six visits, by the end of the sixth morning visit, that was on a Tuesday morning between half past nine and 12 noon, he started to speak again. And it's things like this that you don't realize when you do these projects, how it can affect people's lives and, and improve their situation. Um, and his story actually appeared on a BBC Songs of Praise program when they came to Wakefield. It was called The Wakefield Way. That's a footpath around the city. Uh, and it was countryside stories and stories about the city uh, as the program was being run. And, and he actually spoke on that interview, which was fantastic. His confidence now is, is, is through the roof is great. The other things we do, obviously improving access for disabled, uh, wheelchairs, uh, electric scooters. So with this, working with a friends group for the Country Park and Wakefield Council, uh, new gates you can see on the right there, the air gate, so that scooters can get in there, taking the curb out, lowering that. Improving footpath, and this goes through a bluebell wood. It's quite level ground, but it was uneven and difficult for wheels. So we've, we've managed it through help of various groups like the probation service uh, and, and different companies coming in to help us put footpath material down to direct people through to the Arboretum so that everybody's got access. And this is a company, we, we have a lot of corporate days and things and volunteer days where people can come and help. Uh, and this is, these are a group of managers from a company called DS Smiths, a packaging company out at Featherstone. And, uh, that we're looking at one of the gnomes, would you believe, of the gnome room, and it helps to kids to go around the country park, finding the different gnomes. Um, and the story is that it's a true story, actually, going back to the late 1800s. A bear escaped from a circus, and we're in these woods around this area, um, and it was captured, and obviously, uh, and everything was made safe again. The children have to find the gnomes to say it's safe to go back to work in the woods and get on with the things that you do. And strangely enough, all the gnomes are named after the, some of the volunteers that work in the country park. Uh, and I'm Roger the Bat Gnome, and I'm down by the lake. Thank you very much for that. So, so this is part of the health and safety assessment prior to their staff coming. And they were so generous with equipment and materials, uh, but also they brought nearly 50 members of staff to help us on a day where we did lots of path work and lots of painting and signs and things, uh, litter picking and that kind of thing through the day. And it was a great day out, really good partnership working. Some of those original signs, after several years, they started to decay and somebody realized if you kick them, you can break them. So I thought we won't just replace a few, we'll replace them all. And this is timber, like the timber that was used on the benches. This larch is actually felled in the thinning out process within the plantations at New Miller Dam and, and in our area. So it's locally sourced larch. And by that thinning out, that allows lighting and allows the woodland to become more diverse uh, rather than a monoculture plantation. So uh, this is in our workshop, which I'll be talking about in the second talk on Thursday from 3 p.m. Uh, about the workshop and the nursery project. And we're in there and we produced the new 113 signs for the site. Uh, Timson's Engravers did us a great deal on the engraving. Uh, they have a factory where they do the engraving. The Timson's on the high street, we get your shoes repaired. They also do engraving. Uh, and they, they sorted that out for us, again, with a common name and scientific name for them. And these are the signs going in. So you see the piece of wood on the left, uh, and then what it becomes on the right, with this buried up to the shoulder. And here are some of the friends from the country park helping us to get those into the site. The last one going in. And also these posts are really good if you've got your dog with you and you don't want him to wander off. So it's great that we've now been able to get all those in place and people can learn whilst they're going around the site. What I like, I was up there one day and a, a young family were up there with about five kids and the children were running about calling out the names of the trees. Uh, we have three trees that's identified as the dinosaur trees, so trees that would have been around millions of years ago and they've got to find the dinosaur trees. And it's great to hear a kid from Barnes and a broad Barnsley accent shouting, Dad, Dad, look, it's a ginkgo biloba. You know, when would a kid get a chance to learn about that type of tree? So that's what it, that's all about. 
Now down at the boat out, we, uh, Jill, one of our volunteers, Tree Warden's volunteer, helps to organise the heritage weekends, which are uh, in September. Uh, and this time we were doing about the natural heritage and different groups could come along and other people could learn about how to get involved with those different groups. So it's again, it's that networking and that communication in and around the community. Now the Woodland Trust have been great supporters of our work. And over the years, you know, they've had different themes for planting. And for 2014, they were creating four national forests to mark the centenary of the end of World War I. And uh, I was approached by uh, two councillors from Featherston Town Council, uh, who came to our meeting of the 9th of July 2014 and said, look, we've seen this, that they're going to be doing this. Can we plant a tree for each person, each man that was lost in World War I just from Featherston? And I was shocked to hear when they said 353 men didn't return uh, after 1918. So I realised we had to do something special. Uh, my wife's own grandfather is from that area and he would have gone with these men and he was fortunate, fortunate enough to return. He would have known many of them. So we went into four schools within that district, with that with Featherston area, talked about the benefits that the trees we would be planting would, would bring because these were native trees. We talked about the food chains, we talked about carbon capture and all the benefits they would bring. And then we went on to the, the local history and the children were asked to, uh, to find if they could, if their surname appeared on the list of men that were fallen, uh, if they could research that name and see if they could find out if they were related. If a child couldn't see their surname, then they would pick another one and do that research. And that was done through four schools in the district. On the second page of the names, if we go towards the bottom right, you'll see Sidney Charles Wilson. Uh, and remember that because he, his story crops up again a little bit later. A little girl at Street House Junior School, Megan, she said, look, my name's Wilson. I want to find out about him. And she found out something quite special about him. But then talking about, well, why did they lose so many? We know they went as a PALS battalion uh, and Colonel John Shaw was the colliery manager of lots of coal mines in this area, as you know. Uh, they went as a PALS battalion. That was one reason why large numbers were lost together. Uh, but if you look at Joseph Isaiah Wooten on the left, he's in the 180th tunneling company. Now these lads could dig, they were miners, they could dig. So they were always at the front, they were either digging trenches or digging tunnels. And we think that's why the numbers were so particularly high. So we made, I thought well, we'll make a marker for, and this was the only cost really, because the trees were gonna be free from the Woodland Trust. Uh, the, the markers we had to purchase and Featherston Town Council bought those and we got the wooden markers initially, made the poppies to go on them, laminated some red card with a dot in it just to glow on and each man's name appear on a marker. And this is in our workshop at Thorns Park Nursery, which we'll be covering in the second tour. And then down on site, this is down at Mill Pond Meadows, we were allocated a piece of ground down there to, to do this and this is right next to the main road. Uh, that goes into the town of Featherston. Literally, it's such a busy road that goes to Featherston and Pontefract and through to Wakefield. Setting it out. And when we set it out, then we realised what we created. Uh, and if you imagine what it might have looked like after a major campaign in France. In the distance, there's a, you can't quite see it on here, but there is a derelict building in the distance. And when the kids came down to do their tree planting, we were able to try and imagine what it might have been like for these men during that time and the dangers that they faced. The trees came from the Woodland Trust and here we've got a tree pack of 420 trees, free to any community group. So look those up on the Woodland Trust website. We've got the canes, the tree guards, and you get about nine or 10 different species of tree, British native tree to, to do your project. If they come and you can't plant them straight away, you should use the boxes. I put some soil in the bottom of the box lids and boxes, sit them on those, I and mean, even within a few weeks, you get some fresh growth appearing on the roots. So they get a flying start when they go out to site. And then on the morning of the 11th of the 11th, 2014, we did the first planting. The schools would come on different days, uh, but we'd have a special service at 11 o'clock on that day. And then the children would plant the trees afterwards. Now, when we were setting out this project, people were walking past and asked what we were doing. And the comments came back, well, it won't last two minutes. It'll get vandalized, there'll be problems and all this kind of thing. And what we found is there hasn't been a single thing. I even left those flags flying for a year and they, they wore away in the wind before anything was touched or damaged. 
So don't let anything like that put you off when you're doing a project. Yes, there's a possibility there could be some damage on projects, but don't let that influence what you're going to do. And then on the morning, we had a service with children had learnt about the war poets and read some poetry. We had a service on site before they were given their trees to then go and find their man uh, to put, plant the tree just behind the marker post. So again, we're looking at the root systems and things like this, how the tree functions, learning about the tree in the process of carrying out this project. Then this is the dangerous bit, giving lots of kids a stick. So these are the canes and things, but no problem. But if you look down to the bottom left, you can see how wet it was. It was a terrible wet season we had for that planting in that particular November. But again, it helped to get across the conditions that might have existed in France that these men had to put up with during that time. And then out planting the trees behind each marker. And this is Megan. She's planting the tree behind the marker for Sydney Charles Wilson. And the, the lady on the left next, next to her, I was contacted a few weeks before after it appeared in the local paper about we we're going to do this project. And she said, oh, my relative was a chap called Sydney Charles Wilson. Are you going to plant a tree for him? I said, oh, would you come along? Because I know there's somebody going to be planting a tree there. It'd be great if you could be together for that planting. And they're from the same family, as it turned out. And now it's brought that family back together again through tree planting. And on the right, you can see it appeared in a national magazine uh, and Megan became a superstar. And uh, those magazines went to the schools that were involved. Then in 2018, the, the community project was received so well that we were asked to make it permanent. So permanent markers were now found because the originals were starting to decay. Uh, we did these in the workshop. The poppies were from the British Legion. This is the type you buy for your car. Uh, and they were made permanent signs. And in school, the children also started to look at things like, well, what about all the horses that went to war, the millions of horses? And this, and this was Featherston Town Council doing this, a fantastic job in the community by the town council. Uh, but sort of, sort of researching that aspect of it, all the workhorses that went and never came back. And then in March 2018, ready for the final centenary year of, of World War I, the war horse arrived. And it's magnificent, it really is. And this overlooks the traffic lights and the main road, and it overlooks the markers and the trees that have started to grow on that side. And getting ready for that, for the, plan, for the event on the 11th of the 11th in 2018, again, another one of our corporate days, this time with Nationwide Bank, who worked in the nursery in the morning and in the afternoon, we came down and unwrapped all the white marker posts ready for the event a few days later. Uh, and in the centre there, you can see uh, Margaret and Graham Isherwood who were, who were really the brains behind the start of this project and have been the energy behind it all the way through. And this is what it looks like now. On the, on the 11th of the 11th, 2018, a, a really big event um, to, to launch it. You can see the little white stones underneath the war horse and these are done by the children where they put poppies on, on white pebbles uh, and, and put them underneath. And this is the view last week. It doesn't have to be on that scale. This is, this is at Horbury in Horbury Park, which is another town that joins links with Wakefield, really. You know, the, the estates that are really joined together as you go out of Wakefield towards Horbury. And, and we've found over the years that Rotary Clubs have been particularly supportive of what, what we do and they've been great. And, and Horbury, Phoenix Rotary Club and two of their members are on the outside of this group here and in the centre a representative from the British Legion in Horbury and we planted a native oak tree which we sourced as the, through the Tree Wardens Group funded by Rotary Club and then I made the plaque, the plinth that's on the right to go next to the tree ready for the ceremony which would uh, happen a few days later uh, to mark the event for the people of Horbury. And the Rotary Club have helped us on other sites. This is a site called Shore Cross, which I'll be talking about in the second talk. It was an old refuse tip, a coal mine first, then a refuse tip. This, we're on the road to what was the recycling centre that's now closed and moved to another location. Uh, and due to water issues flowing through this site and, and as a carbon capture project funded by the Forestry Commission, we put thousands of trees on top of these hills uh, to, to reduce the amount of water that might flow down through that site and affect flooding lower down. 
And this is another project. This is a hedgerow project just outside a fence by a busy railway line. As you can see, there are four tracks up there. And there was a local history of young people getting onto the tracks and messing about with signals and things like this. So we decided that when all the trees were felled on the embankment by Network Rail, that we would plant outside the fence. It took me two years of negotiation with Network Rail and the council and to raise the funds. And we put half a kilometre of hedgerow in there, 4,000 hawthorn and blackthorn trees. But we also added some native trees as a wider planting. And this is, uh, I think this is year two from Wakefield Methodist Juniors, who started this off with four or five different schools that came. But again, talking about the benefits the trees will bring, but talking about rail safety. Uh, Network Rail were good enough to provide two men and a digging machine for three weeks to help to prepare the ground for this. Rotary clubs again came and helped with this, uh, getting stuff into the site. And this is what it looks like now. So some of the soil on this, there was no soil on this particular plot that's a wider area going towards the fence that's over on the right. You can't see the fence anymore now for the trees. Um, but the soil came from a flood alleviation scheme on the other side of the city that was full of wildflowers that were, they were having to dig out to prevent houses being flooded nearby and create a, you know, a reservoir. So I said, look, bring it down here. We'll spread it across this site. And we've got lots of wildflowers in it. It's full of comfrey. We've added rowan trees in it. There's white dead nettle. There's all kinds of things in it. And it's a real haven for wildlife. And it's right next to the national cycle route uh, that runs alongside the railway track itself. And this field borders the, the, the site we've just looked at. Uh, this was a tip, it was a quarry, a sand quarry, and underneath the sand was coal. It was capped off about 50 years ago and then covered over with soil. Uh, for 15 years, I've been trying to get some trees onto this site and get the permission to do it. But now because of the, the new Northern Forest push, we've managed to finally get some consent to do that. And this block of trees, the first 2,400 trees we put on here this winter, um, is to start off the first of four blocks that will go on. Now you're thinking, oh, this is in the countryside. Well, no, it's not. The houses are immediately behind where the cam uh, camera is going up uh, towards into the city. And the M1 motorway, you can see the Emily Moore mast in the distance on the left-hand photograph. And the M1 motorway is just at the other end of this field. Eight lanes of busy motorway going from uh, Wakefield and in towards Leeds. So it's a, it creates a green barrier between the motorway and the city, it helps to take out particulates and reduce noise and all the benefits that that will bring and a nice place to walk. Corporate days again, the estate management team uh, that work for Wakefield Council, it says Onji, uh, the company, they said, look, Roger, we'd like to come and help. You can have 75 people. Uh, right then, okay, we'll find a project. In Thorns Park, we wanted to take out the epicormic growth, the lower growth around trees to make the park feel safer when people walk through it. Uh, and over three days, I said, look, can't do 75 at once, but can we have three lots of 25? And over three days, we managed to get more than halfway around the park. Uh, there are 3,000 trees in the park uh, and pruning them. Uh, we got local school groups to come and help. They were dragging branches away and creating habitat piles for hedgehogs and toads and things like this. And the company were good enough to provide Christmas gifts for the kids. And these are other things, make these events special, make them memorable. This is your park, this is a special place, we want to celebrate it. And again, the same company, this is a, a project that's recently, just last year actually, 2020, we, we won the uh, Wakefield Civic Society's Environmental Award for this project. It's in the midst of social housing, we've got a community centre there just behind I give a talk to the what's known as the loneliness group that meet there every Wednesday about trees, but they're, a, they're an elderly group and they said, look, we'd like to plant trees behind, but we can't do it on this ground behind. So I organised a project, spoke to Hendel Lane Junior School, which is a few hundred yards away. We did the benefits of trees again in class. Then they were able to come and the high school helped as well to get these planted. The loneliness group provided the refreshments for this three day event again uh, to get these in the ground. Near are the kids putting those in. And the thing I find from going to so many schools, and, and I had to make a list a few weeks ago for Wakefield Council as to how many schools we've covered. And over 14 years, we've worked with 23 educational establishments in the Wakefield district from juniors through to special schools and, and, and as children who have been sort of can't be in mainstream school uh, due to discipline issues and things like this. So we've worked with lots of different groups, but I know from talking to kids, there's an anxiety about climate change. There's a worry about that. And if you can go out and actually do something positive, that helps to alleviate some of that stress. 
And again, in Thorns Park, we sometimes get some bigger trees donated, get the kids in, talk to them about the trees, but it's their park. Bring a bottle of water, kids. Come and water these trees over the next few years. Help them to grow. In school, creating nature gardens in school and willow tunnels and things like this. Uh, the money for this particular site I got from a Texas carpet company who have a mill in Halifax and I was made aware of it and we got $1,000 to help get the materials for this particular site. And just at the side of it, it's in the city itself, but on their school field, they had enough room under some trees to make a nature study area to log into the wood wide web. And we made these in the nursery project and the logs were provided by Wakefield Council to make an outside learning area. Uh, and this was funded by Wakefield Tree Wardens. And then again, trees planted, hedgerow trees provided by the Woodland Trust, this time funded by Yorkshire Tea uh, to create a nature area around the edge of that school. And that's the garden as it looks now. You saw in the previous one there, it mentions the tree charter, the original one in 1217, which gave the rules and regulations about what you could and couldn't do in the forests and woodlands. That's been refreshed in 2017 for what we want now into the future. So have a look at that online if you can, the Cherry Tree Charter, and here it is in school for the kids to learn about. That Willow Tunnel we saw just a minute ago, that's now grown nicely. And we were invited by Yorkshire Tea to an event uh, for this, a school in Wakefield to represent all the schools that had received trees funded by them over a few years. And they brought people from Kenya, from the plantations that they've got in Kenya, where Yorkshire Tea have funded a project there for local people to grow trees, to grow fruits and, and sustainable planting to help with climate change. Uh, everybody told their story and, and one lady actually has a tree nursery there to help to supply the trees into the local community and it's raised enough money for her to buy land to, to look after her family. And the kids enjoyed it, everybody had a chance to tell their story and the projected images of those that were involved in all these projects this is at Thorpe Perro Arboretum, another, another good visit in North Yorkshire near Beedale. Thorpe Perro Arboretum. They put faces up onto the building, the hall and the trees, uh, and then played the stories of the different people and how they were engaged with trees, how trees, what trees meant to them, and the children were involved in that. Uh, one child from each year group, and then when they got back to school, they could tell the rest of the school about their experience and about the benefits of trees. So we're passing on that knowledge. We're not just doing it ourselves, we're engaging others to get involved in that. And finally, town, tree, trees in towns, how do we fit them in? Uh, it's a totally different tangent, but this is at Horbury High Street, just on the high street outside the Methodist Hall. Uh, we supplied some benches, which I'll be talking again, again about in the, in the next talk at 3 p.m. on Thursday, but also a chance to add a couple of trees there. And this is in one of the parks in Wakefield District, a little gem of a Victorian park at uh, Valehead Park. And uh, there's a friends group now for this park. You would think you were in Japan, wouldn't you really? But we've got to find ways of making sure that these town and city parks are protected into the future. And we start to plant in anticipation of losses because a lot of the trees in these parks are getting old. We're starting to lose some already. So how do we invest in the future for, for people to have those parks and look after them into, into the future. We actually supplied 1,500 native trees for this friends group funded by Wakefield Tree Wardens and the local community came to help plant the trees and the local high school, Year 7s, uh, to create a nature area down by a busy railway line, which is at the back of this particular park. So again, it's that sharing, it's about networking, it's about doing things together to make that difference. I've come to the end uh, and hopefully there's time for some questions, but please feel free to get in touch with me anytime about your projects or anything you want to ask about these projects, what we've done. Um, uh, I'm on 07973 421146 um, and email is parkinsonr78 at gmail.com. We want to see success for trees. We want to see lots more trees in urban areas uh, wherever we can fit them in. So thank you very much. And I hope we can uh, have a chat a little bit later about all these projects. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. That was really, really inspirational. Uh, it's incredible what you and the team have achieved. It's, it's amazing. I particularly like your projects where you're involving children. You know, they are our future. 
and um yeah it's, it's really inspiring to see that thank you um and I love the images of the cherry blossom at the end as well incredible my favorite my own favorite it's, i mean I, I just want to say thank you to urban tree festival for us to record this as well because it's a story we wanted to recover some time to say thank you to everybody that's been involved and this has been the first opportunity to do that so thank you so much for that well no thank you honestly thank you you know people like you make this festival what it is so thank you for getting involved um, I've got some a few questions, so bear with me. Let me look down here. So um, lots of lots of lovely comments about people saying how inspirational you are, the incredible work you've done, and the brilliant projects. Um, so uh, this is from Penny. So she says, amazing projects, but making all the contacts and raising the funds sounds like a full time job. How much time do you spend on it? Uh, well, I, f I found it's got more and more, but you'd be surprised how little money you need to actually carry out these projects. You know, as I say, we, we have, we've occasionally applied for small grants and, you know, that could be a thousand pounds here or, or a few hundred pounds there. Uh, but you'll see in the second talk, I'll we'll talk about fundraising there. Uh, we do some unusual things to raise money, but you don't need a lot of money. Uh, and as I say, the Arboretum, uh, even including Wakefield Council's man hour and machine costs, came in at less than £20,000. So over time, with these donations and people being generous, which they have been, uh, it's helped us to, to get these things done. Uh, we have a separate account for the Arboretum. That's one as one funded project. So we have a separate bank account for that. So any donations for that is purely for that. But then we have a general fund, which helps to fund all the other projects in the district. Brilliant. I guess once you kind of get going, kind of stuff kind of comes to you as well and you, and you know what kind of projects and funds to kind of look for going forward as well. Yeah, you'd be surprised how much you can get for free. And, and being Yorkshire folk, we like free. <laughs> so, so it's, you know, it, there's a lot of generosity out there from people and from organisations. They say the tree packs from the Woodland Trust, I've lost count of how many we've had over the years. Uh, and on one particular site, which I don't even mention in these talks, we got 2000 trees for those projects. Wow. Um, so, so that kind of help that eliminates that need to raise funds. Uh, and it helps enormously sourcing trees and quality trees, healthy trees, to get into these projects. Yeah. And, do, and do you, I guess, as tree wardens, you know, the, the legacy of the project, are you involved in maintaining the trees going forward as well? Yeah, and that, that's the important thing about the council partnership, because by doing these on council properties as well, they are mapped within the council system. So on the overlays that they have for all the different things that's in the districts, so obviously there's one for trees. And even the, the GPS system they use for, for managing the trees, you can even label on each tree on their mapping system as to when it was planted, why, and all that kind of thing. So in the future, it's a historical record, but also how it's going to be managed. It's, it's not ours. We don't own it. We'll help to look after it, and we'll obviously look after its interests into the future, but it's a public asset, and, and we want to get these features in there for people to enjoy now and into the future. Brilliant, amazing. I've got a question for you. Um, obviously, you've worked on some brilliant projects over the years. Do you have a favourite? Um, I think the favourites I have is when you get those reactions like the young man who started to speak again and, and, and that things like this, you'd be surprised how often you get these pleasant surprises that you never thought of. Uh, another one was the railway project with the kids down there planting the hedgerow. Uh, and a dad came, you know, the parents come along and help with the kids. And the dad came over to me while the kids were planting the trees and said, thank you for organising this, because when my son's doing this, he's just the same as everybody else. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, he said, well, my son's autistic. In school, he has to have a carer with him all the time and, and help him to learn and that kind of thing. But look, he's doing the same as every other child while he's here. That's special. And when you get the feedback later, I've even had feedback saying something's happened where that child has changed where they've now got confidence that something's they've now become more settled in their attitude and you can't really put your finger on it but i think it's to do with caring i think it's to do with uh, being able to achieve something really positive um, that you know there's appreciate and when somebody says thank you for doing that that makes you feel good and, and i guess also just being in nature you know we all know the yeah. benefits of being outside in green space getting our hands dirty and exactly. trees are a big part of that aren't they so yeah. brilliant um, another question here. So, do, 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 how many are there in your tree wardens group? Well, I meant to mention that at the start because we're only a handful of people. 
Um, and when we started, when the first meeting was called in late 2006, before we sorted out the constitution in February 2007, uh, literally, I think six people turned up. And it's never been much more than that, really. But what we have at the meetings, we have no membership fee. Um, anybody can come to the meetings. If, if anybody's got a request from a parish council or, you know, an individual or whatever, they can come along and, and, and join with that. Um, we share all the details of what we're doing and the accounts and things like this. I always give a presentation about what we've done in the last three months because we have three monthly meetings. So it's, it's that sharing aspect. But as I say, it's very, very small. But I think what we've been good at is coordinating uh, and facilitating really these projects. But again, it's not just by us, it's, it's through this networking and that's just through good communication, regular communication, mutual respect and, and just getting these things. And what I'll say to people when they do want to volunteer with us, so look, we never fall out with Wakefield Council or others because once you fall out, you've lost communication and that's when things stop. So yeah, there'll be things, that there'll be sticking points and there'll be issues, but we don't fall out about it. We have several projects on the go at any one time. So we've always got success coming along, you know. Brilliant. Yeah, that's really, and I think you're right. Communication is really key with all these projects, yeah. isn't it? With them. Um, so did you, did you, I'm just gonna read one more question now. Um, so this is from Nikki. Did you have to onboard the district council or, or did they um, have to work with you to get on board? Uh, who, I guess who, I guess the question is, who kind of reached out to who? Well, I think initially it was uh, the council were made aware that well, there was such a thing as the tree warden scheme at the tree council. And then that started the conversation as to how you bring that together. And I say we were lucky then that within that tree department where the tree officer, senior tree officer who was, who was keen to make this happen, I'd already met him through, I shan't call it guerrilla planting, but sort of through my sympathetic tree planting in the district of the previous 20 years, and we got on very well. So we said, look, you know, let's let's make this happen. So I think we had a good relationship to start with, uh, and it just seemed to come together. So, so yeah, there was an invitation there, and then dealing with the tree council and, and bringing that together as a system. But it's clear that the system, that system does work. Yeah. Um, it's finding those positive people within your council to work with. And I know we mentioned this on the meeting yesterday, but but it, but they are there. There's lots of positive people there that want to do positive things for trees and engage the community, the ranger service, the countryside service, the tree officers. They're there. Just find them. You know, you might not find them straight away, but they're there. Find them and work with them. Great. Thank you. This is a question from Michelle. Um, she's interested in how you find kind of all your um like your the extra dirt and the other things that you repurpose is that is there a site that you use or is that just again kind of word of mouth no no i'm, I'm, I'm you can probably tell but i'm not a big user of, of social networking and things like this but but it comes i mean i've lived here over 40 years and we know lots of people um the conversations flow very easily we are a community and that you know you become aware of what's happening uh, and if I make a suggestion, and I must admit that the managers within the street scene department, which the, with the, which the tree team falls within, they come forward with suggestions at times. So you'll see in the next, next talk, there's a project there, the nursery. We couldn't have achieved the restoration of the nursery without their help and then pointing us to other departments to get free assistance with this, that or the other, you know. So yeah, it's, it's having that, those conversations and there's no cost in that because you find people want to help. Uh, and you'll see there's more corporate engagement in the second talk, which does bring funding as well, you know. Um, so it's things like that, how you make it happen. There's lots of different ways, as you'll see over these two talks. Brilliant. And for everyone on this talk, I've just popped in the link for Roger's talk on Thursday, which will be at 3 p.m. And, you know, I could listen to you talk all day, Roger, so I'll be there, definitely. Um, OK, so it's 5-2. So unless there's, um, I don't think there's any more questions. So I think we'll say thank you very much for, to Roger and thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, as I said, check out our website. We've got lots of more events, including Roger's events on Thursday. And, yeah, we hope to see you in another event.